Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today we are talking about our two most recent great ones, how they may have changed my opinion on herd management, an announcement that EW made about herd management recently, and showing a new and improved guide for fallow deer. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how my opinions have changed as to whether herd management affects great ones over time, because I actually have changed my opinion, I think three or four different times throughout the uh, time that we've used herd management. So it's not like I've always held the exact same view on whether it works for great ones. And honestly, after the fallow deer, I've once again had a little shift in how I feel about it and what I think it does. But in order to fully understand where I'm coming from here, we gotta go back to when I first started using it, and that was with the red deer. My first couple grinds for red deer were actually quite long, but they were not nearly as long as the couple following it where we were using herd management. We started out with a 3000 kill grind and a 3200 kill grind, no herd management at all. Then we went to my third and fourth red deer grinds which took 6000 and 6650 kills and those were the first two grinds where I used herd management. And I was using it to a T, to the most extreme level that I ever have in my entire time playing this game. And with those two being my longest grinds ever with herd management and just overall aside from the bear grind. I immediately thought to myself, okay, so there's no way that this affects the great ones. This has to only be for diamonds. Then comes along our fifth and sixth red deer grind, and this is where my opinion started shifting a little bit. We got our fifth one in 680 kills and our sixth one in 180 kills. And at that point, I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe it actually does have some effect on the great ones. Then comes along the whitetail grinds, and we start out pretty average on kill counts for the whitetail. We had our first four HM grinds for whitetail being 1980 kills, 1100, 1760, and 1150. And at that point I started to once again think to myself, maybe those two red deer grinds were just lucky and they don't actually get affected by herd management. Because again, we were getting plenty of diamonds, which is usually a good sign that your herd management is working. But we were not getting the great ones in any abnormally short time. At least in regards to whitetail. Obviously gotta keep the context of we're talking with whitetail right now. And whitetail are usually between 1 and 2,000 with some grinds going up to 2,500. Uh, at least the majority of them are under 2,500. Then comes along a time period where we started getting really, really short grinds. And this is once again where my opinion started shifting a little bit. We got a 600 kill grind, 730 kill grind, 80 kill grind, and then 1350. And I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe it does. So this is kind of where I'm getting at. I've gone back and forth multiple times on whether or not it affects it or not. And then a few grinds later on uh, grind number 17 for Whitetail, we started not using HM again. We completely undid all of it on my map and went back to just shooting everything. And immediately I noticed that the kill counts were very, very similar. We got 1,280 kills for a great one for our very first no HM grind, then 1,550 for the next, 1,390 for the next, and 540 for our last no HM whitetail grind. And this is once again where my opinion started shifting to, I guess it doesn't affect them. And then we go to the second round of HM grinds on whitetail, where I had a lot of very, very long grinds. 1,461 kills for our first grind back using HM. Then we got 1,923, and eventually one of our longest whitetail grinds of all time, 2,271, which even further reinforced my opinion of it doesn't affect them. Then we ended up getting a 289 kill grind, which was definitely a very lucky one, but then right after another 1,762. So just time and time again, I was continuing to reinforce my thought of, I don't think it affects them at all. And now we see the fallow deer. The fallow deer have completely changed the way I look at it because I have very consistently been getting these fallow deer great ones in under 500 kills. Our first grind was 428 bucks. The second one was 395. The third was 460. And that puts us currently on our fourth grind where we are at 337 and we have not got our great one yet. Could I be getting lucky? Possibly. But the fallow deer do seem to pop really, really fast. And it seems that the majority of people that are grinding them are using HM, at least 
the ones that I've been able to see posted in the Discord. So it makes me think maybe HM does affect great ones, or it's possible that it only affects certain species. Because if we take a look at Black Bear, I've noticed that for the most part, people that aren't using HM on Black Bear tend to get them a little bit quicker than the people that are, except for like some specific examples. Uh, mine is definitely not an example of that as we are over 8,000 kills and the majority of those being HM with no great one bear. Red Deer were quite a long grind as well as we saw at the beginning of this little discussion. So my theory is that it only affects certain species to a massive extent because we look at the whitetail, it's a very like average length grind whether you're using HM or not. You definitely have a lot of short ones that I've been able to achieve which that's just the byproduct of having 27 whitetail great ones. Some of them are going to happen quickly, but the majority have been between 1 and 2,000, with a few of them being a little bit over 2,000. And most of my whitetail grinds have been HM. I believe I have 8 of my whitetail great ones without HM, and then 19 of them with it, and it's been pretty consistent over both methods. And then we take a look at my moose grinds as well, with those being pretty short using herd management. 820 kills, 130. Uh, 500 and then a very weird grind that you'll see millions of different things that I've added on to it to explain what was happening. We did about 1,280 kills of HM with no luck, uh, spent about 500 kills undoing our herd management, and then went a couple thousand without herd management. And then eventually we ended up switching to Rev on Tule Coast. Now, if HM does affect great ones, then technically that would be the end of the grind in my eyes. I don't think that you should carry kills over from one map to another if one of them is HM'd and the other isn't. Because technically, if it does affect them, you would have to reset your progress on your grind if you go to another map. So that would make our first Rev on Thule grind 300 kills. Uh, 4,500 since our last Great One Moose if you count all the Medved kills. But still, 300 without it, and then we ended up getting another one 1,200 kills later. Moose have definitely been a weird one, but I still do think that Moose might be affected by it. My personal take on this is that Moose and Fallow are affected by HM, and Bears and Red Deer are not. And then something like Whitetail might be kind of in the middle where there might be a little bit of an effect, but definitely not much if there is any at all. So hopefully this makes sense. I'm going to try and like screenshot all of the different grinds as I talk about them to make it easier to see what I'm talking about, but uh, who knows how long that's going to take. I do still need to get this video out by today, so we will see. So that's kind of my take on whether or not it affects great ones. I personally have started to think that maybe it affects some, but I don't think it affects all of them, at least in my experience. Now, something that I do want to also... Uh, kind of mention is feel free to leave a comment down below with your own opinions on it as to whether or not it works for some species, all species, none, or if you just personally don't see enough evidence. Now, keep in mind, I'm showing off all of my grinds for the data here, but I do kind of take into account the other grinds that I see from people throughout the community when forming these opinions, making sure that it's not just me that is having this experience. So I do my best to try and make sure that I'm checking out a bunch of other stuff as well. And in general, it seems that Fallow Deer have been a very fast great one. Same with Moose. But Moose take a lot longer to kill because there's not as many of them in the same area and they're pretty tanky. So it made it seem like Moose took longer. But in reality, kill counts have been the same between Moose and Fallow for most people. But yeah, leave a comment down below on your opinions on this topic and whether or not it affects them. And uh, as always, be respectful to everybody else that has different opinions than you in the comments. Now let's get to something that happened yesterday on the Expansive Worlds live stream that kind of shocked everybody. Now, it has been known that EW did not see herd management as cheating because they responded to a question of somebody in one of the live streams. Where Jaxi essentially said, no, it's not cheating. It's not even close to cheating. And... A lot of people took that and said, well, cheating is not the same as exploiting. It's definitely an exploit. Well, on the recent live stream for EW, Jaxie Beard clarified even further that they do not see it as an exploit. And he made very sure to uh, specify and make sure that it was completely known their stance on the topic. There's been a lot of passionate discussion in discourse of streams about herd management affecting Great One spawns. Any chance we could ever get some clarification on that? In the future, is this info too sensitive? 
it, it is sensitive. It is sensitive. I, you know, and, and this is an ongoing topic of conversation. It really is. And uh, I had it put to me. And it, was, it was such a brilliant reference. I think some people look at herd management as... Uh, um, I think they look at it wrong. I do, and I don't mean any disrespect. But let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. When you play a game that has any form of end game to it, albeit different, obviously, than what we're doing here, what is one of the most common things you see? Min maxing. I feel empowered by this music as we talk about this. Min maxing is rampant in gaming. You either are a min maxer or you're not. Literally herd management is our version of min maxing. In fact, there's a conversation going on today and I can tell you this, okay? And I know there's some that just don't, some don't want to listen to this and I, everyone's entitled to their opinion and I respect that fully. We do not consider herd management an exploit. Let me explain. We've had exploits in our game. I, I've been guilty myself back when I first started creating. There was one that uh, a, a creator, Zaggy DK, found. Um, a member in his community found it. He amplified it. We all did it. We all did it. And we were able to select. Uh, I think it was two in track and one in spotting. And when we clicked on a track, we could specifically see the exact weight of that animal. And at the time, weight was the direct uh, multiplier to if an animal was going to become a diamond. And we used that until really we all said, you know what? Eh, this is an exploit. We need to stop. That is an exploit. Using game choices to create an undesired return. Now, we did not intend for people to mid-max as they do with herd management that was not in the original document plan but it's exactly gameplay and the devs do not consider it an exploit and i mean that sincerely it is another way to play take it or you leave it um it's not a big debate it's our core community that gets involved in it um and uh yeah it's i i i, I do want to speak out on it i do and it's something that um, people should understand, right? Our view on it. You're going to have your own view. You're going to have your own opinion. What we want is for people to play the game they want. Someone has figured out how the game mechanics work. That's not an exploit, right? That happens in every game. This is called, literally what we are doing is min-maxing. So as far as the sensitive information surrounding herd management, it's not something really that um, that we can put out there. We're not going to confirm the mechanics. We can't do that. Devs don't do that, right? Uh, that just gives too much of the game away. And uh, some people don't want those confirmations, right? There is, um, yeah, and that's really all I can say about that. That's all I can say. <laughs> so I think at this point, it's pretty clear what EW's stance is on herd management. They don't see it as an exploit and they want people to be able to play exactly how they want to play. And I should also add to that that I definitely don't think that herd management is for everybody and I also don't think that it's for every grind. In fact, I don't do all of my grinds with herd management, I only do it along the Great One grinds. For the chance of getting super rares along the way, making more diamonds show up to keep it more interesting so I don't get bored while I'm killing thousands upon thousands of the same animal repeatedly, hoping for Great Ones to show up, and obviously the ever fleeting small possibility that it could affect some great one now without further ado and all that uh finally off my chest and out there let's go ahead and take a look at our two most recent great one fallow deer the first one that we will be showing off i did end up getting in 395 kills and the one after that was got in 460 kills so let's go ahead and show them off it's like they're doing little tests with the colored names in chat to see like what works oh great one oh yes oh my gosh ah! oh my god did you just get a great one irish elk wreck painted irish elk wreck painted let's go it's the is that is that painted is it painted or golden oh my gosh let's go oh my gosh oh my gosh 
Is oh, Iba let's go. Can see this? Yes, <laughs> Iba is here. Oh, Iba, I'm so sorry, dude. Oh, I'm it's so not the sorry, combo man. I wanted, but I don't care. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. What fur type? Wait, no, it's, it's Fabled Hooded. Yes. That's the Fabled oh, Hooded. Man. Oh, that's so the one of the fur types I wanted. Yeah, I think I I think I judged this rack unfairly. Oh yeah, now that you got it, of course. No, no, no. Now I was gonna unfair. say when you get true racks to do the right thing, it looks pretty good. I, mean, it's I like don't like the super flat ones I've seen some people get, and the ones that like Jaxie showed off that looked more flat. Gotcha. But um, the this one's pointed upwards a little more, and I like that. Here we go. Down he goes. Holy. Great one. Fallow number two on the ground. Wow. 223 killing him good. Yeah, I like the 223 buff. It's it's really nice. Holy man. Is it the one you wanted? It's one of the fur types. Not my number one fur type, but my number two favorite fur type. Wow. Oh, gosh, dude. Look at that. <laughs> 269 on the score. Oh, yeah, that's a cool Irish elk rack. Look at how it's pointing upwards. That one's actually sick, man. Is there a whole lodge just for great ones? Yes, I have a lodge that I just have great ones and super rares in. And then I have the rest of the plaques filled with just random stuff. Oh, great one! <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh, there he is! Oh my gosh, we got him! 460 kills, let's go! Great one, number three! <gasps> Look at that! Holy! <laughs> it's another fabled hooded! With the, with the, the paddle club spoon Mickey rack. <laughs> oh my gosh! Let's go, guys! 460 kills! Holy! This is like, this is insane how consistent we've been getting these in 460. Or like around 400. Holy! Our th oh my gosh! Our three great one fallow deer have been 428, 395, and 460 kills. Okay, I think, yeah, I see mainly Glock. Yeah, Glock. It looks like it's Glock. You guys want to see the Glock, so we're going to do the Glock. At this point, I wouldn't blame people that are, you know, somewhat, either somewhat new to the game or somewhat new to the channel that come in here and they're like, oh, this dude's got three great ones in like a thousand kills. Like, he must be cheating, right? I wouldn't blame people because if you don't know the channel, if you don't know how much effort I put into grinding and how often I stream grinds, then that could be very much something that you would think. So I don't even, like, I don't even hate on people that think that because it's totally, like, it's a reasonable thing to think if you are not familiar with the channel and you don't watch a lot of the grinding streams. At the end of the day, it's just not everybody's going to believe you, right? I mean, look at some of the best like streamers in games like Counter Strike and uh, Tarkov and Call of Duty. Like, you know, people like Shroud, they get accused of cheating all the time when in reality they're just insane at the game. The only difference with Call of the Wild is there's a lot of luck that plays into it as well. Call of the Wild is. Got a lot of luck-based stuff. I don't know if we're going to get closer than 50. The last Fallow Deer started getting attentive at uh, about 40 meters, I think. So we don't have much further that we can go. I need to change the dot size real quickly, though. That is... Oh, no. It's it's already small. No, that's for HUD. Um, Where is it? Reflex sight size small. Let's see. Put your head up again. I know the Glock's got really good penetration, so we should be fine. He's going down. Let's go, guys. Great one, Fallow. Number three on the board. Oh, my gosh. And down he goes. Down he goes. Don't kill me. Don't. No, don't you dare. Oh, my gosh. We'll get them all eventually, but... For now, like, I don't really care which ones we get. As long as we're getting combinations we haven't seen before, I'm happy with it. And that is a fabled hooded. Oh, my gosh. We got another freaking great one, Fallow. These are definitely shaping up to be the easiest great one. 
Or at least the one that gives you the most short grinds. I, I guess I don't want to say easy because that makes it sound like it's just easy to get a great one. But in reality, I think this is just the one that gives you the most chance of a short grind. Nobody knows why, but they definitely seem to be very similar to Moose. I wonder why some great ones are really tough to get. Like you look at the Red Deer and you look at the Black Bear and on average, they have much higher kill counts. And then we look at stuff like the Whitetail. They're kind of in the middle. And then we've got the fallow deer and the moose that are on average lower than all the others. So now that we've uh, talked a little bit about how I feel about herd management now, as well as uh, showing off uh, EW stance on it and showing both of our uh, recent great ones that have not been in a video, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a fallow deer guide here on the end because I have learned some more stuff about grinding them since the very first uh, great one that we got on Tiawaroa. First of all, let's take a look at the updated zone map that I've got. All of the ones that are in red are zones that I currently have deer in on the map. And the yellow ones are places where I have had deer at one point or another, but don't anymore. As you can see, there is a decent bit of areas that fallow deer can be. And uh, I know there's even more. I know of one person that has like 51 zones. I don't have quite that many, but they definitely can be in more places than what I've got them in. And if you guys are not familiar with Tiawaroa, probably one of the first things you're going to notice is the fact that there is barely any locations that you have to go to to find fallow deer. They are all on the right side of the map in very easy to find and hunt locations. And it makes for a very smooth grind. Something else that is quite interesting is the fact that there's a couple spots in particular that just have an abundance of fallow deer. The lake I'm currently at is one of those locations. If you're doing a fallow deer grind on this map, this is a place you need to go to. Every single one of these drink zones here is fallow deer, and that is pretty insane. It makes for a very efficient grind. Another location that I highly recommend not overlooking is the river. This little river area is absolutely insane for fallow. We have one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 zones just there. And then I've also had fallow deer here as well for like 12 different locations that they can be along the river. If you only hunt two locations on your grind, make sure it's this river and these two lakes over here. You could totally just hunt those two areas on a non-herd management grind and do very, very well. And you could pretty much have a tent at every single zone along the river and still have tents to spare for these locations over here. So if you want to do a super fast, efficient, non-herd management grind, that is what I would recommend as it will be pretty insane. These zones over here on the coast are quite difficult to hunt and usually it takes a long time to hunt them effectively. So I definitely recommend that if you're doing non-herd management focus the river and this lake primarily uh but obviously if you want to you can add some of the other areas in as well but if you really want to limit it those are the locations to go to that's what i would recommend doing if you don't want to do herd management because this area on the river and those lakes are pretty loaded but however if you want to do herd management we're going to go over some tips to help you with that next if you are wanting to do a fallow deer herd management grind, I definitely recommend focusing the coast as quickly as possible. I made the mistake of not fully managing down the coast first, and I have, I've i have had to do it kind of off and on throughout the 1600 kills that we've got on Tiawaroa for the fallow deer grind. So I definitely recommend managing down all your coastal zones as quickly as possible, as there is a lot of solo males on the coast. And they are a huge pain, especially when they're along this uh, coast and in their really difficult to get to locations, like right around the tip of this uh, lookout point right here. This little peninsula is just, it's not good. I'll put it that way. These are all fallow zones, and most of these are very difficult to hunt. These two zones especially, I have to just run up to the edge of the bank right here and look down at them in order to even see them and by then they've already spooked off so I definitely recommend managing down the coast as quick as you can get it to be level twos and low uh, scoring level threes as fast as possible same with uh, this lake over here now this one isn't terrible it can be grindable however there's a lot of trees along it so it is definitely the least 
doable location if you want an efficient grind where you're not going to have to worry about trees being in the way. So definitely recommend this area and uh, this area like managing down as quick as possible or managing them down as quick as possible. And even this one potentially because you do get a lot of solos here and solos are always quite the pain in a grind. I probably should have said this before but with herd management for Fallow you want to manage the entire map except your main zones uh, down to level 2s and level 3s that have approximately the same score as a level 2. And this is a really good example of a buck that I would probably leave because he's very likely in that lower part of the estimate. 118 to 160, there's no way he's 160 so I'd say he's probably 130s or 140s. And in my eyes that is good enough to leave for herd management. And this right here is a good example of a level 3 that you would probably want to shoot. That guy is well past uh, 140 so you definitely want to take a buck like this down for your herd management as they're not small enough to really make a big effect in the amount of diamonds you see on your map. With herd management, the goal is to get around 70% of your males to be these smaller level 3s and level 2s like this guy right here. And what that will do is cause the other 30% of your uh, population of bucks to much more commonly spawn level 5s. And again, unconfirmed, but it also is possible that it helps with great ones, so if you want to get more diamonds, therefore more chances at super rares and potentially more chances at great ones then I definitely recommend doing this. The only situation where you would not want to leave a buck like this is uh, this particular situation right here. It spawned in one of my favorite zones. If one spawns in your favorite zone and makes it so there's no longer bucks for you to shoot there then just take it out because you don't want it to be taking up one of your best zones. There's certain zones that you will notice are much more consistent than others. As you're hunting your entire map, you will find consistent zones, and when you do, I recommend trying to make those your main zones, and uh, that means if any low levels spawn in them, you gotta take them out. As much as it hurts to have to shoot such a small level 2, he was in a zone I didn't want him in, so it had to happen. These zones right here, the one that we just shot that 2 out of, as well as the one we're looking at right now that is across from it, is a great example of well-placed zones that were super consistent. These zones always get their bucks back. I've never had any problems with them disappearing. And because of that, I made them my main zones. Now, as you're hunting your map and hunting all of the zones, you will find zones like this. Pay attention to how many zones you have that end up getting bucks back super regularly and use those as your main zones because those are going to be the most efficient zones to grind and in turn will get you more kills per hour if you prioritize those super efficient zones. I've also had a lot of questions about what happens when you shoot a doe. Now I've noticed that with the fallow deer, sometimes shooting a doe will cause literally an entire new herd to be created. Sometimes when you kill a doe, I've noticed they just don't come back. Then you kill another doe down the line, uh, it doesn't come back. And eventually, I think once you've killed three to five does, from what I've seen, sometimes it'll just combine with a couple of your bucks and create a brand new herd. I have had this happen on a few different occasions. In fact, uh, one of the zones over here is a perfect example of that. I have a zone here that has does now, and it never used to. It used to be a zone that was just bucks. And then I ended up accidentally killing a few does, and next thing you know, I got a new herd here that's four does, or three to four does, and a couple of bucks. And now the final little point of our little guide here that I wanted to mention is uh, the fact that you actually can move zones around a decent bit for the fallow deer. Now, what do I mean by that? If you end up deleting a zone, it seems they really don't go too far away from where you deleted them, in my experience at least. Uh, take this zone for an example. This never used to be here. This right here used to have just like a solo buck. And then I went ahead and deleted the zone here because I was just not a fan of it, and it moved over here. And it was the same thing down in this area. I had a zone here and a zone here. I deleted both of them and the two herds merged into one zone right on this shore right here. So they don't go that far when you end up deleting your zones from what I've noticed. So I recommend that if you've got a zone that's in a really bad area, like potentially like let's say you've got a couple good herds here, but obviously this area is tough to hunt, you could delete those zones and uh, hope that they go somewhere like right here where it's a little bit easier to see them. Just know that you will have to go and find them again once you delete the zone, so it may take a little bit, but if it's a zone that you like, or uh, not a zone you like, but if it's a herd you like, then it may be worth it. Well everybody, this has gone on quite a lot longer than I expected it to. I'm sure this video is probably going to be like 30 minutes long, 
Uh, but I felt that it was worth it to try and jam pack as much info into it as possible. As I do have quite a bit experience in doing Great One Grinds and I just wanted to share as much of it with you guys as I could and talk a little bit about how my opinions have changed throughout the time that I've been doing Great One Grinds and HM Grinds as a whole. After killing over 75,000 animals on Great One Grinds and getting 41 Great Ones, I've definitely gained a decent bit of knowledge and seen a lot of things happen that have uh, gave me the ability to make a guide like this for you guys. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as leaving a like down below and leaving a comment uh, with your thoughts on everything as it does help out not only the channel and it helps this video reach more people, but it's also good to get conversation going and uh, chat with you guys and see your opinions. So if you haven't already, be sure to do all of that and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.